Hi, this is week two of unit seven of chemistry and in this lesson we'll be looking at how to solve for the concentration of a substance in particular molality as well as parts per million. For lesson objectives states that students will learn how to solve for the concentration of substances including molarity, parts per million. We'll also be looking at parts per billion as well. Let's go ahead and get started. We're going to go to continue our conversation on how to measure the concentration of a solution by talking about molality. Molality is calculated by dividing the moles of solute by the kilograms of solvent. So the formula you'll see up there at the bottom of the slide is again moles of solute over kilograms of solvent. Now that is very similar to molarity, except for the denominator is different. In molarity, you have moles of solute as a numerator, but the denominator is liters of solution. Here in molality, we have same numerator, moles of solute, divided by kilograms of solvent. Now let's go ahead and take a look at some examples of how to solve for molality. In example one, we're asked the following question. Calculate the molality of a solution containing 117 grams of NaCl dissolved in 5,000 grams of water. Now to solve for molality, we need the following. Molality's cursive M is moles over kilograms, and the kilograms is for the solvent. So in this case, our solvent is water. All right, so we're gonna have to change this 117 grams of NaCl from grams to moles, and then we're gonna have to get this 5,000 grams of solvent and change them from grams to kilograms. And then we'll divide moles over kilograms, and that will give us our molality. All right, so let's begin with the 117 grams of NaCl. We're gonna need the molar mass of NaCl to go ahead and solve for that. So that's going to go ahead and be, there's 1Na, 1Cl, and molar mass of Na is 23.0 grams, chlorine is 35.5 grams. So that's going to go ahead and give us the same values, then we add them up, that's going to be 58.5 grams per mole. So that is the molar mass of NaCl. Next, we're going to get our given 117 grams of NaCl, and use our molar mass to switch them from grams to moles. So we have 117 grams of NaCl. We'll put one mole in the numerator, 107, nope, 58.5 grams of the denominator. And we're going to multiply 117 times 1 divided by 58.5. That's going to go ahead and give us 2 moles. That is the moles for our numerator. Now for our denominator, again, we have 5,000 grams of water. What we want to go ahead and do is switch those to kilograms, and uh, let's go ahead and do that. So I have 5,000 grams. Now, the relationship between kilograms and grams is for every one kilogram, there's 1,000 grams. So that's going to go ahead and give us 5 kilograms here. So now, we're going to go ahead and divide the 2 moles over the 5 kilograms. So 2 moles over 5 kilograms, and that's going to go ahead and give us... Uh, 0.4 cursive m, so it's 0.4 molar. That is example one. Let's go ahead and move along now to example two. Here we ask, find the molality of a solution made from 202 grams of potassium nitrate dissolved in 4,000 grams of water. All right, very similar problem. Again, we're going to go ahead and start by changing our grams to moles, and uh, that's for the smaller value, that's your solute and the larger value of 4,000 kilograms, that's our solvent, is water. We're going to go ahead and convert that to kilograms. All right, so, but before we can get to uh, this 202.2 uh, grams of potassium nitrate, KNO3, first we need to find the molar mass of potassium nitrate. So let's go ahead and do that. Potassium, there's 1K, 1N, and there's 3 O's. All right, molar mass is 39.1. 14.0, 16.0. All right, now we go ahead and we we'll multiply this 39.1, 14.0, and that's going to be 48.0. Giving us a grand total of, let's see, 0.1. Let me just put it to the calculator to make sure I get it correct. Plus 14, plus 48, gives us 101.1 grams per mole. All right, so we got the molar mass of the potassium nitrate. Now we're going to go ahead and use this molar mass to change our given, which is 202.1 grams of potassium nitrate 
switch it from grams to moles. So I'm going to write down my given, 202.2 grams of potassium nitrate. For every one mole, there's a molar mass of 101.1 grams. So that gives us two moles of potassium nitrate. That is our numerator. Now for a denominator, we have 4,000 grams of water. Again, the formula calls for kilograms. One kilogram and uh, over a thousand grams. That's the relationship for every one kilogram. There's a thousand grams. So you go ahead and multiply four thousand times one over a thousand and gives four kilograms. Now to solve for molality is just moles divided by kilograms and that will give us molality. So two moles over four kilograms that will give us 0.5 cursive m which is molal. 0.5 mole is the answer for example number two. Now let's go ahead and move on to our next problem. Here, number three asks, how many grams of sodium hydroxide, NaOH, are needed to be added to 5,000 grams of water to create a four mole solution? All right, so in this problem, we're gonna go ahead and um, solve it. In example three, in example three we're asked how many grams of sodium hydroxide, which is NaOH, are needed. Uh, let's take it one more take. Are needed to be added to. Next, let's take a look at example three. Here we ask how many grams of sodium hydroxide, which is NaOH are needed to be added to 500 grams of water to create a 4 molar solution. All right, again, for molarity, it is moles over kilograms, and that will give you our molality. All right, so in this scenario, slightly backwards, where they're giving us the concentration, they're giving us the mass of the water, and uh, what they want to know is how many grams we need to add. So we're going to solve for the moles first, and then once we have the moles, we're going to go ahead and switch it from grams, from moles to grams, and that was going to give us our answer. So I'm going to go ahead and move the kilograms over here, so it'll be kilograms times molality. So this, this setup is going to go ahead and give us the moles. All right, first of all, though, we need the kilograms. Here we have 500 grams of water. So we need to change those from grams to kilograms. So it's going to look like this for every... 500 grams of water, one kilogram has 1,000 grams, so that's going to go ahead and give us 0 0.5 kilograms. All right, so we got our mass for the solvent. The molality is given to us, four. So to get the moles, it's going to go ahead and be 0 0.5 kilograms. Multiply times the molality, which is 0.4 molar, and we'll go ahead and multiply both of these, we get two moles. Now that we have the moles, we can go ahead and switch those from moles back to grams. But before we need that, we need the molar mass of the NaOH. So let's go ahead and solve for that. NaOH, there's only one of each. So there's one Na sodium, there's one oxygen, and there's only one hydrogen. Molar mass of sodium is 23, so we end up with the same value. Oxygen is 16, so we end up 16, and hydrogen is just one. Add them all together, it's just 40 grams per mole. So that's the molar mass. So we've got two moles. So I'm going to write down my given. So we got two moles. Next, uh, for every one mole, there's 40 grams. So it's going to look like this. One mole in the denominator and 40 grams in the numerator. So multiply 2 times 40 over 1. The moles cancel out, so we end up with 80 grams of the... NaOH sodium hydroxide solution that should be added to the 500 grams of water to achieve a formal solution. All right, that takes care of example three.
parts per million is another unit used to measure the concentration of a solution. In parts per million, the formula is the grams of the solute divided by the grams of the solution multiplied times one million. Parts per million is usually used to measure something very, very small, such as how much chlorine needs to be added to a swimming pool. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at some examples on how to solve for parts per million. In example four, we ask the following question. Calculate the parts per million of a solution containing five grams of CH4, that is methane, dissolved in 10,000 grams of solution. To figure out parts per million, here's the formula. It is the mass of the solute over the mass of the solution. Then we we'll multiply it times one million, since it is parts per million. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So for our solute, it is five grams of methane. So we're gonna go ahead and put that in the numerator, five grams of methane over the denominator we have the mass of the solution, which is 10,000 grams. And we multiply it times one million, 10 to the six, and that's gonna go ahead and give us our parts per million. So let's plug that into the calculator. All right, and we get our answer, which is 500 ppm, 500 parts per million. How do you interpret that answer? Well, if you had a million parts, a million molecules of water, 500 of them will belong to the methane. That is example four. Next, let's go ahead and move along to example five. Here we ask a very similar question. They ask you, let's calculate the parts per million of a solution containing 12 grams of CH4 dissolved in 5,000 grams of solution. So again, it is our CH4, our methane, and uh, so this is example four. Now example five, we'll put it right beneath it. Um, so we have our numerator, which is the mass of the solute is 12, divided by our mass of solution, that's our denominator, 50,000. And again, you multiply it as a million, since you're solving for parts per million. So it's gonna go and be 12 divided by 50,000. Multiply times one million. It's going to go ahead and give us 240 ppms. All right, so that takes care of example number five. Now, for example number six, it has the following a solution has a concentration of 25 parts per million and the mass of 10,000 grams. What is the mass of the solute? All right, so we have the mass of the solvent is given to us and uh, the final concentration that is. 25 parts per million. So they want to know, all right, so what is the mass of the solution? Right, so we're going to go ahead and uh, solve for that. So we're going to put M for the mass of the solute. In the denominator, the total mass is one, uh, 10,000 grams times 1 million. And uh, that equals 25 parts per million. So that will be our setup. Now we're going to go ahead and solve for this problem. Um, now, one of the first things we could do is go ahead and simplify. Notice we have here four zeros, one, two, three, four. We can cross them out from here, one, two, three, four. So our answer is really M times 100 is equal to 25. All right, so now we can go ahead and divide both sides by 100 to simplify. Okay, and that's going to give us our answer of 0.25 grams of our solute. All right, that is example six. Up next, we're going to go ahead and discuss how to calculate the percent composition, which is the percent by weight of a particular element in a compound. So the percent of each element in a compound is known as the percent composition. So the mass percent can be calculated by dividing the mass of the element over the mass of the whole compound and multiply times 100 since it is a percent. Now let's go ahead and take a look at some examples on how to solve for percent composition of different elements in different compounds. In example seven, we're asked the following question. Find the percent composition of carbon in C3H7COOH, which is butanoic acid. So here's our formula. Now, one of the first things that students uh, need to look at this and say it's like, hey, there's some common items here that spread out, like for example, the carbon, the oxygen, and the hydrogen. Can we summarize this a little bit? Sure, you can do that. It'll also save a little bit of work. So for example, there are four carbons. There's really eight hydrogens, seven here, one here, and there's two oxygens. 
All right, now we're going to go ahead and find the molar mass of butanoic acid right here. So let's go ahead and do that. So there's four carbons, eight hydrogens, two oxygens. Next, molar mass of carbon is 12.0, so that'll give us a 48. Hydrogen is just 1.0, so that's going to go ahead and give us 8.0. And finally, oxygen is 16.0, so that'll give us a 32.0. All right, if we add them together, that's going to go ahead and give us 18 goes 1, 88 grams per mole. Now, you want to go ahead and find the percent composition. In this case, asking for carbon. What we're going to do is we're going to get the mass of carbon and divide it over the mass for the whole compound. That's going to go ahead and give us our percent composition for carbon. So for carbon, it will look like this. Again, total mass of carbon, 48, over the total mass for the compound, 88 times 100 since it is 8% that we're solving for. So we plug it into the calculator and we get the answer. It is 54.5%. That is how much carbon makes up for the total mass. The total mass of 88, 54.5% comes from carbon. Next, let's go ahead and take a look at our next problem. Example 8, find the percent composition of oxygen in the molecule C6 H12O6, which is glucose. All right, so again, let's go ahead and solve for the molar mass of this compound. That'll be our very first step. So we got six carbons, 12 hydrogens, and six oxygens. And we're going to multiply and center molar mass. Carbon, of course, is 12.0. So that's going to go ahead and give us, let's see, 72. Hydrogen is 1, so that's just 12. And 6 times 16, that's going to go ahead and give us 96 for a grand total of 180 grams per mole. Now here they ask you specifically for oxygen. What is the percent composition of oxygen in this molecule? So now we'll be looking at oxygen, 96%. So it is 96 grams over 180, and that is for oxygen times 100, that's going to go ahead and give us our percent composition. So it will be 96 divided by 180, multiplied times 100, and this one, oxygen makes up 53.3% of the total mass comes from oxygen. That takes care of example 8. We're going to go ahead and end this lesson with a quick discussion on why is it that oil and water does not mix. Now to approach that explanation, you got to consider the phrase like dissolves like. Now, that refers to the polarity of a solute and a solvent. So what they're talking about there is if you have a polar solute and a polar solvent, they are alike. So therefore, they will mix with each other. An example of that will be like salt and water. Both of them are polar, so therefore, they will mix with each other. Now, nonpolar, nonpolar for the solute and solvent will also mix with each other since they are alike. A uh, good example of that will be oil and fats. They will go ahead and mix with each other. Now, if they're mismatched, for example, you have a polar, nonpolar solute solvent combination, they will not mix with each other. For example, salt and oil. And uh, vice versa, nonpolar, polar solute solvent also will not mix with each other since they are mismatched. Uh, that would be the classic oil and water. They won't mix with each other. So if they are alike, they will mix with each other. But if you have a mismatch, then they will not mix with each other. This brings us to the end of lesson two of unit seven. Thank you so much for watching.